Hi, this is Pastor Mike. Today we're going to talk about prayer. You know, it's not uncommon for people to sometimes struggle in their prayer life and feel like it's become dull and stale. I'm going to share some scriptural principles with you today that are going to help you to keep your prayer life really alive and fresh. And um, these are great principles from scripture. We've actually printed them on this card for you. And this card is uh, created in a size where you could stick it in your Bible as a, a reminder. In a previous video, we went over the, uh, the Lord's Prayer and the different principles that are found in the Lord's Prayer. Today, we're going to go over this side of the card, and it's about, again, principles that will help you keep your uh, prayer life really fresh and alive. You can find this prayer card on our website. You can even make a request by email, and we'll send you a copy of it. Uh, if it will be a blessing to you. Let's jump right into it today. Our first principle comes out of John chapter 15 and verse 15. Jesus is talking to his disciples and he makes this comment. He says, I have called you friends. I think that's an amazing principle that Jesus would look at his disciples, his followers, uh, the ones that he's going to die for on the cross and says, I call you friends, not just servants, but I call you friends. And uh, I want you to know today that the Lord is looking for a relationship with you. Our first uh, principle here today is that our prayer life should be relational, not transactional. You know, when you go to a bank, um, you give the teller um, whatever piece of paperwork that you need to give them, and they give back to you information. And there may be a please and a thank you and a little chit-chat that goes back and forth. But really what's going on there is a transaction. In your prayer life, you're not just transacting. You're not just giving the Lord your list. You are relating to the Lord. He is your God, your Savior, your King, and yes, your friend. And um, I want to remind you to, to have a relationship in your prayer. Don't just pray the list. Pray your heart. Don't just say the words. Speak to the Lord. Speak to Him from your heart, and it will help you keep your relationship and your prayer life fresh. Our next principle comes from uh, Matthew 6 and 7 as well as 1 Corinthians 2.15. In Matthew 6 verse 7, Jesus describes to his disciples that when they're praying, they shouldn't just babble. They shouldn't just use a whole bunch of words, thinking that uh, using a lot of words will fill up the tank and their prayer will get answered. Now, in this principle, we're talking about being concentrated with our prayer, not diluted. I don't mean that we need to edit our words down. I just mean we've got to be um, focused on the thing that we're praying for and pray with our heart and our mind engaged rather than just kind of all over the place using words without necessarily meaning them from our heart. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 15 says that we have the mind of Christ. When you look at this whole scripture, it's talking about how the Holy Spirit can reveal to you the thoughts of Jesus. It's so applicable in our prayer lives because when we're praying, we're not just praying for what we desire, we're praying for God's will. And what better way for the Lord to reveal His will than by the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the thoughts of the Lord Jesus. And that gives us, again, a more concentrated prayer, a focused prayer, praying what God has put on our hearts. When you don't know what to pray, say, Lord, I pray for your will in this circumstance. I pray your will be done, just like we saw on the other side in the Lord's Prayer. Our next principle comes from Mark chapter 1 and verse 35. Let me read it to you. It's talking about Jesus. It says, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, went to a solitary place where he prayed. I like that. Jesus went to a solitary place. Jesus went and got some alone time to go and be with the Father and pray. There's another portion of Scripture that says that Jesus only did what he saw the Father doing. You see this, this pattern of prayer in Jesus' life, even getting away from the disciples and the crowds and just going and spending time with God. And in this principle, I want to encourage you to keep your prayer time consistent, not chaotic. In other words, have a time of day, have a place where you go faithfully and spend time with God. I think for some people this is easier to find than others. I find in my own household that I have to go hide on the front porch in the mornings. 
I've got four children getting ready for school, my wife getting ready for work, and so I find the quietest place to go and hide and uh, have some consistent time with the Lord is my front porch. And the door opens and closes and people interrupt, but uh, it's uh, my place and where I can spend time with the Lord. And I'm trying to be consistent with when I'm there, faithfully at the same time of day, if you will. Maybe you're a morning person, maybe you're an evening person, but set aside time every day, whether it's 5, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. If you set aside a consistent amount of time to pray with the Lord, you'll find that the time isn't enough and you'll want to spend more and more. So be consistent, not chaotic, and pray with the Lord. Pray to the Lord, excuse me. Our last principle comes from 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17. It says this, pray continually. Another version says, pray without ceasing. I like to say, pray, 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 pray. Um, pray on all occasions. Pray when you're driving your car. Keep your eyes open. Pray when you're in the Walmart. Pray when you're out and about with your family. Be prayerful about life. Uh, we call this principle, be logged on, never logged off. Remember years ago when uh, you needed to log on to the internet where you'd do the dial-up thing and it would take about a minute or two and then you would be online, logged in. You could go where you needed to go. Now with Wi-Fi, these wireless networks, uh, we can be logged in all the time. And that's how our prayer life should be. should be logged in all the time. The Lord Jesus is just a conversation away, just a prayer away. You can just speak to the Lord whenever you need to speak to Him and share your heart with Him. And uh, so I encourage you, uh, in the previous principle, have consistent times of prayer, but in this principle, always be logged on. Always be having conversations with the Lord. Always be sharing your heart with Him, seeking His heart for you in a circumstance, in a conversation as you go about your day. I hope these principles will bless your prayer life, uh, help keep it fresh and alive. Don't let it become stale. Shake yourself up and say, I'm going to spend some time with my Savior. Uh, I want to remind you that on the website you can get um, the discussion and worksheet that goes along with uh, this lesson that you can share with uh, others or study on your own. Also on the website is an image of this prayer card that I shared with you, as well as on the other side is the Lord's Prayer. And again, you can email us if you'd like a copy. Also on the website, you can uh, click on our podcast. I'd encourage you to go there. If you'd like to listen to more on prayer, you can find a sermon series that we've done on prayer. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.